you for being with us again. Oh, you're welcome, Kazi. Martin, we've been looking at recently the uh, comments from the White House, which has referred to these elections as a pantomime. What can you tell us about the US attempts to undermine the democracy and the elections that are taking place in Nicaragua? Well, Kathy, I will uh, summarize it by saying that it was expected. Uh, the US government has been trying to not only discredit, but also libel the, whatever project or program, political or economic program, the Sandinista government uh, has been implementing. And that is part of a uh, regional policy against Nicaragua, against Venezuela, against Cuba. And after the failure of the coup attempt in Bolivia, they, they have been, they have put Bolivia to the back burner. But at, in, in time, they will go against uh, the Bolivia as well. That's what I can say. It's, it's part of its script, political script, against Nicaragua, Cuba, and Venezuela. Martin, as you say, this is part of the script that we could have expected from the White House in terms of its attacks on Nicaragua's elections. What have the attacks been prior to these elections? We've, we've heard in, me in Western mainstream media a claim that there is no opposition in Nicaragua. What can you tell us about what is the actual case in terms of these elections? Well, in Nicaragua, there is not only political organizations which are uh, in the opposition. There is also opposition media, opposition newspapers, opposition radios, opposition television, that is part of the, the Nicaraguan democracy. That the US, by discrediting this, or by trying to discredit this election, is denying the existence of this media, of this press, of these radios and television channels. Martin, very interesting there you, how you referred to the media because this statement from the White House actually claims that independent media has been shuttered in Nicaragua and that journalists have been locked up. But as you say, that's not actually the case. In fact, we see a very different situation on the ground in Nicaragua. Can you tell us anything about the different parties that are taking part in today's ele elections? Would you repeat the question, please? Can you tell us about the different parties that are taking part in today's elections? Well, there are two alliances, the Alliance for the Republic, whose candidate is the youngest political candidate in the history of Nicaragua. He's only 29 years old. And there is even a reverend, Guillermo Osorne, who is a lawmaker and also a reverend. And he leads the Nicaraguan Christian Path Party. There is also the constitutional lib uh, liberal uh, party, which is one of the oldest parties in Nicaragua. And there are other, and also that you mentioned before, there is an, uh, a party from the autonomous region of the Atlantic coast that will be the seventh contending party. But in fact, there are six parties contending now for the pre presidential uh, seat. Uh, these parties have uh, carried out their uh, political campaign without any disturbance from the government. They have had time uh, uh, in radio, time in television, also in newspapers. The right-wing uh, media has supported these parties against the Santinista front. I would say that basically I think there, there, is more, there are more media outlets which are in the opposition than there is official media. That's a very interesting point that you make there, Martin. Martin, what can we expect from today's elections? What are the polls saying? Well, the elections have moved on peacefully, smoothly, during, throughout the day. That was recognized by the Electoral Supreme Council, by observers. Also, Daniel Ortega said, and has repeated uh, this evening, that voting and elections is the way for Nicaragua. So he's reaffirming democracy. He's reaffirming that uh, multi-party system will continue in Nicaragua. And the massive attendance to the, the polls is a shown of, is a shown of that. For instance, 4.5 million Nicaraguans are eligible to vote. 
we have to expect for the final count how, uh, what the turnout was. But I think that is going to be a very high uh, attendance to the polls. Martin, how can we explain this expected high turnout and also the popular support for the Sandinista Front? Well, counting the seven Nicaraguans out of ten were enthusiastic about the elections, that means that 70% of Nicaraguans, of, of the electorate, will be coming to vote for the Sandinista Front. That, that is an indication that it will be a high turnout. For instance, a turnout in Latin America, over 50% is high. 55% is very high. 60, 70, 65% is practically a record in Latin American uh, elections processes. Martin, you spoke to us earlier about some of the social and economic development that we have seen in Nicaragua under the presidency <coughs> of Daniel Ortega. Can you recap some of the main points that you made? Yes, for instance, Nicaragua has been investing in social programs, that is what they call public investments. For instance, 66% of the GDP, that's the gross domestic product, is being invested on social development. That is more than half of the GDP of a nation invested in developing uh, socially the whole nation. So I, I believe that they will continue to push ahead uh, public works continue to build and pave uh, new roads. For instance, one of the greatest achievements in uh, public and infrastructure has been the highway connecting the Atlantic coast with the Pacific coast. That was a no, a very old promise, even from the Somoza times, to have a highway connecting the Atlantic coast to the Pacific coast. Well, that was done by the Sandinista government, led by Daniel Ortega and Rosario Morillo. There is a very modern highway connecting the Bluefield, Bluefield city with Managua city. That helped a lot to boost and increase trade, local trade, and also national trade, and also international commerce within Nicaragua and out of Nicaragua, thanks to that, to this uh, connectivity between the Pacific coast and the Atlantic coast. They will continue to build uh, what they call industrial free zones or economic zones. There are projects with, uh, on these regards as well. For instance, they will continue to push new uh, projects in the health sector, like new health centers uh, new, um, for, they are trying to get new labs for the uh, manufacturing of uh, new drugs, I mean, new medications. This is all part of the book for the next five years in Nicaragua. They will continue to push ahead with modernizing the sport, sports facilities as part of a sports policy to continue developing sports, not only baseball, but also other sports. That is part of a whole program, five-year program that the Sandinista Front has in mind. Oh, I, would, I wouldn't say has in mind. It has already in the programs in the book. Martin, as you say, a lot of development, infrastructure, social programs, we, and you, as, you, as you mentioned there, we can expect that to continue under a Sandinista government. What are the challenges faced by this government in the face of what we've already seen today in the lead up to the elections and today with this statement from the White House, which is obviously the US line is to continue its attacks on Nicaragua? Well, we should expect uh, sanctions against Nicaragua. We should also expect that the media campaign will intensify in the next months. but truth will prevail and that's what I believe. Martin, as you say, we hope that the truth will prevail. We're trying to add our grain of sand to that effort here today. What can you tell us about the 
development of the elections in Nicaragua today, we've heard that they were taken place peacefully, that the polls have now closed, but that we expected a high turnout. What can you tell us about, you've already mentioned it, but about what we can expect from these results? Well, the peacefulness uh, under which these elections took place today is a big defeat for the US government's campaign against Nicaragua. Because they were trying, that the, first, that this election will not take place, that they were trying to do. Second, they will be very happy to, if any violent event would have taken place during the, during the day. That did not happen. So this is, has been a triumph for the Sandinista uh, government that has organized this election nationally with the participation of all the opposition forces in Nicaragua and also a victory and a success for the Nicaraguan people. It's been a kind of party, people's party, electoral people's party in Nicaragua today. That is a resounding victory, not only if the Sandinista government wins, but even if it, if it loses, it is a victory from the Sandinista government because it organized really a very well transparent honest elections. Martin, as you say, the election process has uh, developed very peacefully today, being very well organized, which goes completely against the version that we see in the Western media and the attacks on the electoral system and democracy in Nicaragua. In terms of the Sandinista Front, the Sandinista Front has been in power now for many years. Ortega came back to power in 20. 07 was when he took up the presidency again and has been re-elected several times. What are the ex historical roots of the Sandinista Front? I mean, we know it comes from a struggle against a dictatorship. What can you tell us about this political, this historical context to where we are today in Nicaragua? The main point here, Cathy, is that the Sandinista, Sandinista government has been serving the nation. It has been producing for the people. The people has been realizing this. Daniel Ortega and the Sandinista Front was in their position for 15 years after they lost the elections in 1990. We should remember that Daniel Ortega and the Sandinista Front, <clears throat> when it was the Sandinista National Liberation Front, uh, was a revolutionary guerrilla movement that toppled the bloody tyranny of Anastasio Somoza. They came to power as a young revolutionary uh, government. They started the electoral process in Nicaragua in, uh, with the 1985 elections. That Daniel Ortega won. And then that was amidst a bloody intense Contra war that it was, came to be known as the Contra Dirty War. So in 1990, the, the Daniel Ortega's government, again, organized new elections. It lost the elections. It accepted the loss in the election. Violeta Chamorro came to power, but she was there for five years. But the government of Violeta Chamorro did not, start, did not serve the people as the Nicaraguan people was expecting. Of course, the Nicaraguan people was suffering a very cruel war at that time. But successive neoliberal governments came to power. Ni but Nicaragua did not improve, really, on the health sector, on the economic front, neither on, uh, even they lost the, the baseball league they had during those 15 years in which the Sandinista government uh, was in the position. When Daniel Ortega came to power, or returned to power in 2006, all these programs started to be implemented. Baseball, which is a passion time in Nicaragua, just like it is in Cuba. When Nicaragua has no baseball, they feel bad. Just like in Cuba today, we feel bad because we don't have uh, our national league going on when we, uh, due to the pandemic, of course. But then the National Professional League of Nicaragua came back, new teams, a new very modern stadium was built in, in Managua, which is really a jewel in, among baseball facilities in Central America. And life 
began to pick up in every sector in Nicaragua, economic sector, and we think, and for instance, exports. Exports has been expanding, even during the pandemic, particularly in the past three months. And Nicaragua might uh, finish the year with an expansion of exports of $3.3 billion. That will be a level uh, like pre uh, results uh, in the previous, the previously to the pandemic. So if you see the, go the government of Daniel Ortega and Rosario Murillo, like I said before, has been serving the people and the people knows it. Generally, the nation and the people are wise and they know who they should vote for. They have been winning the last three elections with popular vote, even including opposition parties in the past elections. For instance, the Nero won in 2006 with 38% of the vote. Then in 2011 with 62% of the vote, and in 2016 with 72.4% of the vote. So, voting in Nicaragua for the Sandinista Front has been increasing. This, for this time, uh, for this election, well, I, I, I will be guessing, but it will be around 60 to 70 percent of the vote will go for the Sandinista and Daniel Ortega and Rosario Murillo. This is my estimate. Martin, thank you for providing that analysis, and I hope that we might be able to come back to you a bit later. We're now going to move on to a report from a telesur correspondent who's in Nicaragua.